Alright, welcome back to the channel. Osmos OSR, Old School Rotaries. And uh, today um, I want to get into uh, how to uh, check the stepper on your uh, irons. Uh, it's been about a minute since I've been back here just uh, taking care of business uh, with this whole deal with Seven Stock and, uh, you know, uploading all those videos. Uh, it just uh, takes a lot of time and uh, just other projects on the side. It just kind of takes a lot of time for me just uh, focusing on the R100 and, and others. But we, we're getting back into it. So uh, if you guys uh, missed out that uh, Seven Stock 2022, uh, just go ahead and check out these videos here so you can see what you guys missed out on. A lot of great cars, a lot of great builds. Um, I'd seen a few of the cars I worked on there, so it was pretty exciting. But uh, yeah, if you guys didn't make it, just go check them out. All right, so right off the bat, this is a Turbo 2 uh, rear iron. And uh, right off the bat, I'm going to let you guys know this iron is no good. And I, I was able to tell as soon as I, I tore it apart. So one way i'm able to tell um i wouldn't even have to use the uh, digital indicator like here but uh, it's always good to have a either a dial indicator or digital and you could get this base right here uh from uh, pineapple racing and i've used this one for many years uh, i also have uh uh a, what, what is that uh sterling or stanley i forget but uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a block and it's flat from the bottom. It's pretty much the same idea. And you could just uh, hang your dial indicator on there or your uh, uh, digital indicator. So uh, this is just an upgrade I did a few years back and uh, it just makes life a lot easier. And like I said before, uh, I'm, I'm all about, um, you know, just making life a lot easier. Since I tore it apart, I was able to tell by the deep gouges on here. So um, I normally don't like to show um, customer builds on on the channel but i figured this is a perfect opportunity to share with you guys in case you guys are trying to get into building um one way you you could tell right off the bat if it's no good it's just if you run your fingernails across it and if it's getting caught like literally under there um that's a good indication that uh it's beyond uh repair or resurfacing so as you can see my nail's not going all the way through here 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 all the way up to here i mean even up to here so the step where it kind of like starts up here and it works its way down here all right so i grabbed this pick uh right quick and uh it's getting caught all over the place right here so as soon as i tore it down i mean right away you could just feel it feel this right here all the way around and the problem with this uh, particular uh, rear iron, and well, all three of them in this case, uh, uh, they're beyond um, any kind of repair in, in a sense that you, you can't really get them resurfaced. Uh, and the reason being is because uh, unlike the old school 13Bs, uh, the, the seal or the water jacket seal or the compression uh, seals, whatever you want to call it, uh, they're actually on the iron. They're not on the rotor housings like the uh, later uh, 13Bs. And uh, let me show you what I mean. Okay, so this is from a GSL SC. This is from uh, back in 85, 84, 85. And as you guys could see, uh, the water jackets are on the rotor housings. This is where they sit. Whereas the 86 and up, they have them on the with the exception of the RXA, right? Uh, they have them here on the on the irons. So that's one disadvantage that these um, later uh, 13B engines have is the fact that you can't uh, grind them down as much as the old school irons. So these do have like a wear limit. Not that the older or earlier uh, irons don't have a, a wear limit, but these, um, Right off the bat, if I were to take them to Mazda Tricks, they would probably just advise me to just get some new ones or some used ones that are in a lot better condition. Uh, they can only take so much off, and that's about like two thousandths of an inch. That's the most that they recommend to take off before you start running into issues here on the on the ceiling area here, this this little canal here. So if you start taking too much off, uh, you're risking the chance of. Uh, having some leaks or not sealing properly so you got to have some a certain amount of depth in here 
uh, before you start running into trouble. Okay, I had to move the the rotor housing out of the way just so I could have more room to work over here. But uh, basically, I have my uh, indicator set up already. It's already at right on zero. I don't know if the camera's capturing that, but uh, it's right on zero. And the way you want to set it up is just uh, make sure that your base is right, right on this area here, right between the two uh, water jacket seals. Uh, just make sure it's on there because that's uh, that's the flattest part of. Um, I'm assuming you already cleaned it off or and, and and cleaned it up really good, smoothed it out. But that's what, like one of the flattest areas. Uh, as opposed to the, the actual face where the rotor runs. So you want to set your base on there and you want to uh, place your needle uh, anywhere that, that's the longest within, within this area. You want to just make sure it's right on there and that way you could dial it in to a zero. All right, it's kind of hard to do this with one hand, but uh, it's already flush, it's already at zero. So you want to start uh, just uh, it's gonna fall into the groove. So you wanna kinda of lift it up a little bit and always keeping your base on this area here. And you and all you wanna do is just kinda of like move it out. And there you go, the numbers are starting to move. So right away, it's already at uh, 30, it dropped all the way to 65. So you kinda of wanna go back and forth, go as far as you can and maintaining the base right on this edge here, on this area here. And then you just want to uh, basically just move it back and forth. As you guys could see, uh, it dropped all the way down to, uh, what was that, 65? There we go. 65. So that's way beyond what Mazda recommends. And I believe Mazda recommends uh, no more than 30, what was that, 39? 39 and 10 thousandths of an inch uh, wear limit. In this case, it's way beyond that. So uh, when Mazda says no more than 39 10 thousandths of an inch, that's like, Mazda's like pretty much saying that's the rim. That's like a, an extreme case. So I never really go by those numbers. Uh, I always try, try to stay below uh, the recommended amount of uh, uh, step wear. Um, and, and the reason being is that uh, a lot of uh, places like Mazda Tricks or Racing Beat, they won't take out any, or, or they won't recommend you to take out more than two thousandths of an inch. So just that, with that alone, I mean, if we take, if we subtract two thousandths of an inch over here from 65, it's gonna leave us to uh, like 45, right? So even then at 45, it's still not, it's still not within Mazda's recommendation. So Mazda's saying, 39 10 thousands this is gonna be it's gonna end up at like 45 10 thousands so i mean this is a perfect example why you want to check your irons and make sure they're they're ready now if i were to build the engine with this iron yeah it'll start it'll turn on but it's not gonna give you much of a life i mean it's just not gonna last as long and 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 it's, it's just gonna wear out real soon because uh, the nitrate coating that these come with, uh, it's only about like a thousands or two thousands of an inch uh, thick. So it's already eating deep into uh, the soft uh, area of the, of the iron. So it's only a matter of time before it just like, you know, keeps wearing down uh, sooner than it would than if it were a uh, new iron, if that makes sense, so. All right, now this is uh, another method that you could use if you don't have one of those uh, dial indicators or uh, or a digital indicator. You could just get yourself a straight edge and a filler gauge. This one's two thousandths of an inch. And that's where I kind of pretty much like to stay. And you could just, I could just tell right away, there's a big gap right there. And you could just tell right away that this is gonna go right under there. I don't know if the camera could catch that, but it's going right under there. So um, if I were to turn off the light, you'll be able to see it too with the light. There you go, you could kind of see it shining through there. So, I mean, that's how bad it is. And it shouldn't be shining that way. Well, like I said, this is one way. Another way is just like I said, uh, you could just, I mean, you could just run your fingers right across it and you could just right away. I mean, I've been doing this for a while, so I could just, just by looking at it and then just running my fingers across it or my fingernail across it, I could just tell that 
it's no good it's not even worth uh, uh sending out to get resurfaced it's just best if you find yourself a good use one or uh or just uh, even a new one but in this case um, I, I wouldn't use this iron unfortunately and it's nice because uh, it's been uh, I don't know who did the job prior to to uh, uh, me uh, receiving this engine but uh, the porting looks really good really well done uh, they did some studying on here too uh, right here over here so um, it looks good it looks nice but yeah it's it's not it's not worth it you know uh, it's not worth taking the risk or spending any money on this, but I mean, it's in great shape just other than it's got some pretty bad step wear. So unfortunately, this is going to have to go out the window and we're going to have to uh, source one out. All right. So that pretty much does it for this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you guys enjoyed it, uh, just hit that like button. Uh, if you guys haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit that other button too for notifications so you guys won't miss out any uh uh, future builds or any future videos i uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed and like that uh, seven stock video i put out that three-part video if you haven't seen it go check it out if you missed seven stock go check it out so uh yeah just uh thanks for uh following the build thanks for uh just keeping up with the build and thanks for following the channel guys appreciate it all right we're out